Hey everybody, this is Mia with Project Nerd doing an interview for Dickens Horn Film Festival. I am here with Rebecca Fieschi. She is the writer, producer, and director of Muvez Tet. So Rebecca, if you could tell everybody what this film is about. Sure. Um... Mauvais Tête is a horror comedy short film told in the style of classic Hollywood film from the 90, 1920s, 1930s. And it follows a, a young and odd woman who is desperate for love, but cannot find it in the regular ways. So finds it in her own very peculiar and creepy way. Hmm. the old uh, looking for love I need to find it where can I find it thing I like that so it's a it's a horror comedy yes and her name is is Jenny so what brought on this idea for you what was the spark um I was thinking I was just thinking about a woman who who would want a long stable relationship but would also like to change partners like she changed clothes and then because I like old horror films, I started thinking in terms of horror and how this would work on being on a Frankenstein-ish story. And uh, yeah. What got you into horror? What was the first film you saw? I, I got into horror with not, not really horror films, but films like Edward Scissorhands and discovering what kind of movies Tim Burton liked. And um, so then I explored these old movies that he liked, Frankenstein um, from the 30s, and all the Hammer movies and stuff. And that's really what got me hooked. Would you st prefer to stay in this genre continuing on with your film career? I, I like genre in general, but usually my films don't fit exactly inside one box. So it's going to be a little horror or it's going to be horror fantasy. Maybe it's mainly fantasy, just with some elements of horror, but definitely general genre. I love that. So is it safe to assume that uh, Tim Burton is your favorite director? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are your top three films from him? Uh, well, Edward Scissorhands, definitely. Uh, Sleepy Hollow. I really love Sleepy Hollow. And the third one. Hmm. Third one's tough. It would be uh, between two very different films, Edward and Big Fish. <gasps> I love Big Fish. <laughs> Big Fish is one of my favorites as well. So uh, I am happy somebody else enjoys Big Fish as much as I do, because that's very rare for me to find. <laughs> I love that movie. What type of stories grab you when you're, when you're writing, when you're directing, even when it comes to just wanting to watch movies? What are the type of stories that grab you? Um, I do like uh, uh, very much character-driven stories, and I like when it's not, when, um, I guess when the, the lead character has to become the hero of their own story and doesn't start off being, you know, the person you would automatically root for. I like the struggling. A little bit of underdogness happening there. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What is the most fun about filming for you? It's filming in general is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I like many aspects of it, but I really like working with the actors. And that's, I really love that part. And also working in the actors in combination with the cinematographer to really create the right mood. And then it keeps being fun in post-production with the music composer, I think, in film music plays a really big part in striking the right atmosphere. So you like the, the back and forth, the organicness of just being in the room and creating the flow together. Exactly. Yeah, I love collaborating with other people. I like that too. What movie would you make if you had an unlimited budget? I would make a huge fantasy epic, um, probably with female leads, mm -hmm. kind of, um, I would probably reverse a little bit the 
the King Arthur story, and Ooh. mix it up a little bit, make it female led and mm, turn around on their head those really old um, leading man kind of stories. I like that a lot. I I have not I have not heard that I tried to bring that question about because it's always there's always a limit of budget when you're making films. Like you have to stay within a particular amount. And so that is one I haven't heard yet and I'm very excited. Now I really, really hope you get to make that happen. I'd love to see that <laughs> on the films, just on the big screen. Do you have any dream actors, any dream writers or producers or directors that you would love to work with? Um, uh, yeah, sure. I would love, I guess I would love to meet, work with, would be a bit different. I would love to meet Guillermo mm -hmm. del Toro and be able to uh, learn from him. I really like his, uh, his way of looking at filmmaking and collaboration and all that stuff. And I would love, as an actor, I would love to work with uh, Sorsha Ronan, I guess. <gasps> yes, Sorsha, Sorsha, I believe is how, how that is. Oh, she's great. Ouch. Oh, I just, I got too excited. I hit my elbow. <laughs> she's great. I love her, her style as a leading lady and um, what she seems to strive for when it comes to her own roles. And I feel like she'd be a great match for, for your style from what I've seen. Um, and read, I re because I, of course, read the synop synopsis of your film. Um, this was made in 2016. Have mm -hmm. you made any other films since then? Yes, I have. I've made, uh, I've made two films since then. I've made a, a fantasy family short film about a young troubled girl who only finds refuge in her books. And one day a magical creature comes out of one of her books and beckons her to follow her into the woods where she will meet fantastic creatures that take the shape of her fears. Um, that one is called Silfania Grove okay. and it's actually available on Prime Video and Seed and Spark for streaming. I saw that on your uh, on the website Horomance. That's the that's the production company you have, right? Okay. What's the what's the second one? And the second one um, was just completed. Uh, it's starting in film festivals next month. And that's a horror comedy. Uh, no, not horror comedy, oops. It's a um, fantasy comedy. Okay. It's a fantasy comedy. And I'm playing a little bit on the haunted house genre. Okay. Um, and it's uh, it's a couple that's lived in their own house for a really, really long time, and they're near death, but uh, would really like a visit from their daughter soon. So it sounds really serious, but it's actually a comedy. Very oh, I like that. It seems fantasy also is a part of your creative process. Do you have uh, books or shows or movies that you read, grew up watching that inspire your journey now? Um, I, I love fantasy, whether it's books or um, movies. Mm -hmm. I grew up, like many others, I grew up with Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that kind of opened the door to all sorts of fantasy books. I love Neil Gaiman. And... Um, Movie-wise, Lord of the Rings are amazing, of course, and Stardust. Yes. <laughs> Stardust. Not many people talk about it, but I, I really think it's a great fantasy. And it's fantasy, it's comedy, it's got adventure. It's kind of mm -hmm. I think Stardust is very, uh, I think it's very underrated, yeah. especially for the actors that are in it, for the story that it's telling. I wish... That's one of those movies I really wish had been bigger than it was. Mm -hmm. It was... It was beautiful. It's, it's a movie that every time that it is on TV, I go out of my way to, I don't care where it's at, I'm going to watch it. I think it's not what people expected it to be. So mm -hmm. you need a second watch once you're like, oh, that's what it is. Okay, let me go and see it again now that I know what, what strange and unusual movie it is. And then you can really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. When it comes to Jenny and how you wrote her was there is with 
writers, there's a connection that they try to make happen with their characters mm -hmm. that they're writing. What was the connection between you and Jenny? Um, I suppose that she was uh, very much in her head. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I kind of played on the idea of not being able to tell the difference between what's going on in your head and what's actually going on. You know, when you're not sure, did I actually just say this out loud or did, did I just think it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I took that, but I took it much further. What made you choose to do a 19, 1930 style? Is that, is that, yes. What, what was, what was your reason behind that? I'm actually fascinated. Um, well, one of the things is that I didn't, my story could have been very gore mm -hmm. if, it wasn't in the 1930s style because then it's black and white and um, kind of eliminate anything that um, blood red everywhere. So I wanted it a bit more elegance, a bit more focus on her and not, yeah, not, not blood and guts everywhere. That was right, really right. my main thing. And I really love the atmosphere that comes from these old movies. So yeah, that's, that was my thing. Do you have horror films that you enjoy that are outside of, of the Tim Burton, almost um, fantasy-esque style of doing movies? Yeah, I, uh, I really love all sorts of films. So I, um, I love, uh, the name of it on the tip of my tongue, I can't remember. Oh, The Fly, Cronenberg, The Fly. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I like these, which I guess still have fantasy elements because there's transformation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Fly, um, Rosemary's Baby. Um, okay, I, I go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, usually movies that have their horror but have a strong character story to them. As someone who is very easily terrified. <laughs> What are suggestions that you would make for someone like me to slowly branch into watching horror films? Hmm. Are you, so are you terrified of um, more something slowly creeping in or is it really the bloody aspects that... Um... It's, I don't like things jumping out at me. <laughs> that is, I'm, a, I'm one of those people, but I can handle zombies. Okay. Zombies is fine, I guess, because the science part of me is like, I can make this make sense. I don't like the way it looks, but I can process it. But other things, <laughs> so much. Well, I think, um, again, I'm, I'm Tim Burton biased. So mm -hmm. I think Sleepy Hollow is a great introduction to horror because it's, it's horror, but it's not, and it's not, too terrifying it's not too disgusting and you can it's got a magical aspect to it, it takes place a long time ago so you're not thinking oh this could happen to me right now and i am one of those <laughs> one of those people you know i try not to watch uh any of the of the friday the 13th movies or halloween movies and oh, i really watched the newest halloween movie and i was like this isn't going to bother me. I've never been scared of them. It's not a problem. And then after I was done watching, I was <laughs> all over the uh, I just, I thought I could handle it and I could not. <laughs> was not that, that one didn't work for me. But maybe Sleepy Hollow will. I have never seen that. I recommend. I'm writing it down. Writing it down. What are movies that you enjoy that are actually not horror related? Uh, well, I, again, Saoirse Ronan. I love mm. Lady Bird. Okay. I'm thinking in terms of really recent movies right now. Yeah. I actually have not seen that one either, so I'm, oh, it's, it is it's, now on my list. Yeah. I do like a lot of period films, like The Age of Innocence, movies that took place a long time ago. That is amazing. Have you worked in any other country or, or city? Maybe I should ask, which was your favorite to work in? What was your, your, the setup that inspired you the most? Um, I love working in New York City mm -hmm. um, because there's 
a lot of creative people there, a lot of people that um, want to join in and collaborate. Mm -hmm. So that was really that. I I'm French, so I came from France, and then I started working in New York City, and I really I really love the the attitude people have there and their enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a dream location that you would like to shoot? Mm, I would love to shoot in really, really old woods. Uh, those are, there's a lot of them in America, I guess, California, even though they're not doing too good right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any old growth forest. Yeah. Right there, you have a magical fantasy set or creepy horror. All of it, all of it could work in woods. If you could create a creature that was a horror creature, what elements would you pull from, from different films? Mm. So I, um, I really like werewolves, but going for a werewolf that hasn't been really done or seen before and add it with a more little bit revolting with more revolting aspects maybe looking a little bit at the werewolf in in a mix between the werewolf and ginger snaps okay and um the fly at the end of Cronenberg's the fly that so that would that be a really terrifying disgusting <laughs> terrifying creature. yeah oh my goodness well, I am excited for uh, Mouvez Tet being out. I know it, it's been doing the circuits, but I'm happy that it came on my desk and I got to look it up. And I'm actually kind of excited about it. I have a couple of people that I'm like, look, maybe I'll be able to watch this by myself, maybe not, but I don't want to chance it, so watch it with me. <laughs> and I'm very excited. I already have Prime, uh, I have it set up, so I'm ready to watch and review. But awesome. where can where, so where can we find your films, uh, all of them, and then where can we follow you and find you? Okay, so the easiest way to find my films or me uh, on all social media or on my website is Horromance, which is uh, H-O-R-R-O-M-A-N-C-E. Um, all... I'm at Horrormance on all social media, and that's my website, horrormance.com. Okay. And then on there, we'll find link uh, to my movies on Prime or Seed and Spark. Perfect. You have been absolutely wonderful. I'm so happy that you did this with me. Thank so you. thank you once again. This is Mia with Project Nerd here with Rebecca Fieschi. And catch her film, Mouvez Tet, <laughs> out in the Dickens Horn Film Festival.